Hey guys, this week I'm sharing my fuss-free vanilla cake recipe. It's fuss-free because it only requires five ingredients, which is my kind of recipe. I do appreciate the more complex recipes, but the ingredients list can get a little crazy. Buttermilk, oil, baking powder, just the egg whites, the fluff from a giant's toe. The less fuss for me, the better, as it means I can't mess it up. This is what I use in all my cake orders and it's pretty much perfect. So firstly, you'll want two six inch tins. I'm in the UK and my tins of choice are a brand called Invicta. They're around three inch high. These ones here are now at least 10 years old and they get used every single week. So they've seen better days, but they are strong and built to last. I'll leave the links to everything in the description box below. Next up are greaseproof circles. I buy mine pre-cut in all different sizes due to how much I bake and my laziness. You can just draw around your tin and cut it out. I'm going to grease my tin with Trex, which is just veg fat. I found this is better than butter or oil. Spread it around the whole inside of the tin. I must mention at this point, I don't usually wear nail polish, but I'm just baking for myself and it's not often I get to paint them. <laughs> Place the circle into the base of the pan and stick it down. Now pop those to one side for a minute. I actually use the old fashioned style scales, but for ease of showing the measurements, I've got the digital ones out. You want 250 grams of your fat, whether that's butter at room temperature or cake spread. And then the same equal amount of caster sugar, 250 grams, which altogether makes 500 grams. Now pop them in your mixer and cream them together on a high speed. Let's just leave that to do its thing, really the longer the better, whilst we prep our flour. Tip a little self-raising flour into your tins and completely coat the insides. Tip the excess into a bowl to measure out the same weight again, 250 grams. Yep, it's 250 each of all the base ingredients. Super easy. And yeah, I'm a messy baker. Now check on your butter and sugar and scrape down the sides. You can see it's already a lot paler in colour now. Add a splash of your vanilla extract and continue mixing until it's pretty much as pale as you're going to get it. Now add in five eggs, one straight after the other, and scrape the sides again. Turn your mixer onto the lowest setting and tip in your full 250 grams of self-raising flour. Now, if you're only going to take one tip away from this video, make it this one. Once you've tipped it in, leave it for a matter of seconds before turning your mixer off. It's nowhere near fully mixed yet, but if you wait for the mixer to do it, you'll end up overworking the gluten and you'll end up with a tough cake. Instead, take it out and mix it by hand. You can see the egg is still sitting at the bottom. It's glossy and slippery. Just gently fold the mixture just until the egg and the flour have combined, no more than that, and then divide it evenly between your two tins. I spread the mixture slightly higher at the edges of the tin and leave a small well in the center. The mixture will level back into the middle as it bakes. Now, if you're not from the UK, you're probably wondering why the batter is not runny. Recipes in the US are usually a little lighter on the eggs, but they're heavy on the oil and milks. I've got a video coming soon on the differences. This is just a classic UK Victoria sponge recipe. Now, one thing to note is if you're making this recipe with a tin bigger than an eight inch, so nine inch tins upwards, you'll want one of these. This is a heating core. You just want to coat it in Trex and dust it with flour in the same way as your tin. Place it spike side up in the center and fill your tin as normal. The mixture touching the edges will cook as it's touching the hot metal edges of the tin. The larger the cake, the further apart the edges are and you'll want to add some metal to the center to heat it up and stop the mixture from flopping. Right, so pop your cakes side by side on the middle shelf at anywhere between 160 to 180 degrees, which is gas mark three and four. Leave them in there for at least 40 minutes. 
If you check too early and open the oven door, the cold air could rush in and cause the centre of your cake to sink. Mine are ready anywhere between 40 minutes and 60 minutes, depending on how cold my mixture was or how long it was preheating for and what the weather's like outside. What you really want to do is learn how to check by eye and feel for when your cake is done, rather than just go off a set time. The telltale signs are if you press the cake and it springs back up, a knife is inserted, wiggled, and it feels solid inside and not like liquid, and it comes out clean, and the edges of the cake will shrink away from the sides of the tin. If you press the cake down and it doesn't spring back up, leave it for another few minutes. Once your cake tins aren't too hot to handle, I don't let mine fully cool. I tip them out onto a wire rack, peel off the paper and allow them to fully cool down. Once fully cool, either wrap them in cling film or put them under a cake dome for a few hours to settle. The texture and height of the cake will actually change as it settles, so I never skip this step. I'll often bake all my tears in the morning. They will cool by roughly dinner time and then I'll cover them until around seven o'clock at night where I will then cut and fill them and give them a protective layer of ganache so I can finish the final ganache layer the next morning. Allowing them to settle softens the texture back up and ensures it won't change shape whilst I'm decorating, which can actually be the cause of some bulges and cracks in your finish. If it's not a wedding cake and you're just baking it to eat, you can go ahead and decorate it straight away. So there you have it, my not so secret vanilla recipe. Over the years, I've had to figure out how many eggs or how much mixture I need for all my different sized cake tins. I own four inch tins all the way up to 11 inch. I've put a table together in a PDF along with the recipe, the method you've just seen, and some easy recipe tweaks to create different flavors and filling combos. It's linked below and costs just one pound 50. So how much mixture for an eight inch tin or how much for two four inch cakes and two six inch cakes. It's all in there for less than the price of a coffee. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you again next week. Bye guys.